pick a good one. What you got? Plague Tober. Plague Tober. Um, do you know what day it is today? It is. Is it the fifth? Yes, it's the fifth. All right. Yeah. So today's prompt for Plague Tober is lock. All right. Definitely need to caffeinate and think about this before I get going. Hey friends. So I cannot lie. This one threw me for a total loop. I had no idea how I was going to relate um, Locke to Legtober. Um, so I went digging a little bit. I went to the, uh, the person who created the list. I can't remember her name right now, but she's linked down below. And it turns out that this Plagtober list was actually, she made it specifically for a character of hers. So if you're noticing a trend that I haven't read any of the like rules or descriptions behind some of these prompt lists, it's because I didn't, not until I get horribly confused and don't know what life is anymore, do I go searching for the rules. But I thought on it for a while and I grew up and have lived most of my life in central New York. So when I hear the word lock, the first thing that goes to my brain actually is the canal system. So a lock is where there's an elevation shift and they can raise, they kind of trap the boat behind two gates and then they can raise or lower the water accordingly, depending on what direction the boat's going into. Um, super necessary for the hill mountainscape that is upstate New York to have a successful canal system. So, yeah, we, right in central New York, we have like the Erie Canal, which everybody knows about, but we have a really big canal system beyond that. So there's a stupid amount of locks near and around where I grew up and where I live now. So I went looking, um, as I was thinking about the canal system, I remembered some pictures that I had seen sometime in the last six months of Syracuse area nurses with masks on during the um, 1918 flu outbreak. So I decided to go looking for canal pictures from around that time. And I found this absolute treasure trove of old, early 1900s postcards that are all canal system postcards. Um, I'm gonna have that linked down below too. They're mostly the Buffalo, Tonawanda, Lockport area, but I found a few Syracuse ones including the landscape postcard that I referenced, which I'll show you right about here. Um, it's Clinton Square in downtown Syracuse, which is super funny because there's an ice skating rink there now half the year. And that's just like a random cross intersection, cross streets in downtown Syracuse. Oh, because <laughs> you probably don't know this if you're not local, they filled in the Erie Canal through downtown Syracuse. Like the canal used to run down what is now called Erie Boulevard in the city of Syracuse. And I'm not sure when, I'll look it up in text overlay here, they filled it in at some point and now it's a road. So it's just really, those always really like speak to me seeing like, because that big church building's still there. Clinton Square is still there. I've been there a million times. And, uh, but to see it with the canal still in place and to see, you know, the main street through downtown there, um, I think that's Fayette, Fayette or Salina. To see it, a bridge over the canal is just really, really trippy and cool to me. Um, so yeah, I found, one of the other postcards I found was from Seneca Falls, which is another one of my most favorite places. It's about 40 minutes away from Syracuse, not quite to Rochester yet. Uh, it's where the first women's rights convention was held in 1848. So that was just some people at a park. I'll throw that up right about here. Um, it was a little bit earlier than my 1918 target. It was like 1908, something like that. So I decided to pull the two of them together and just show a small grouping of masked people hanging out alongside the canal at, well, not a lock, but <laughs> it's very tangentially related to the prompt. But um, 
I got a little bit frustrated with this. I, this isn't polished at all by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's really just a glorified 8x10 thumbnail, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Uh, I inked a little bit at the end, you'll see. Um, because I just got really frustrated. Perspective is not my jam by any stretch of the imagination. I'm horrible with it. I really, this is where I absolutely must have a reference. And it was around now. This guy, it's around the time I was putting this guy in that I realized that the perspective of the postcard is not the perspective that I want for the image. So this is totally a piece that I want to uh, revisit as a more polished um, situation. But I definitely need to go downtown and take some reference pictures from the correct perspective. This is like almost some kind of aerial. I don't know how they did that in like 1900. Um, probably just climbed a tree, I guess. But yeah, so it's not it's not the perspective that I want. It's not maybe the format isn't quite right. I, I have to play with it some more. I might want a more elongated rectangle but um i definitely need more and clear reference pictures that was the other thing the resolution on this postcard scan is not great so um i could only enlarge it so much on my phone and get in so close so i'm just overall not happy with this as a potential finished product but i um enjoy it as a draft and I enjoy it as a concept thumbnail. Um, and I do kind of enjoy my little, uh, after they were inked up, I kind of enjoy my little masked characters. They're also not right at all. Like, spoiler alert, um, I made my little group of ladies that I'm gonna put in here very, very Edwardian. Like, they are very 1908. And uh, that's not, there's a big difference in those 10 years from 1908 to 1918. As you would know if you watch uh, Carolina Zabraska or uh, Bernadette Banner, there's a big leap in that decade from 1908 to World War I. So I need to get some better World War I lady, American lady pictures. I may even go hunt down the picture that kind of gave me the idea to make it a 1918 um, mask wearing group of people. That also occurs to me now as I'm recording this voiceover that, like, if I'm portraying the pandemic, I probably should not have these folks as close to each other as I put them, as I drew them in. Because I think the nurse picture, I, well, it's a group of nurses, so they kind of have to stand near each other, but people just drop riding their bicycles don't really have to. So, I don't know. It is what it is. Um... Yeah, I think that's really all I have to uh, say about it. Um, other than I'm, I'm totally going to revisit this one. Just got to get my shit together a little bit better. Um, another contributing factor is that Mondays are a mess for me right now. I, I teach an online class. It's the day that I have to get I have another online class that I'm going to be teaching on Tuesdays. Starting this week, I had to get some stuff, last minute stuff together for that. Uh, and then Punches has gymnastics at night, which eats up an hour and a half of sitting in the car waiting for her. So I definitely didn't have time to devote to this as fully. But like I said, by the time I hit like the 20 minute mark on this, I was so, actually before I hit the 20 minute mark on this, by the time I hit like the eight minute mark on this, I was so, so frustrated with the perspective and I was trying to just work with it and it was just too much for me. Have you ever encountered that before? Like one part isn't right. And even if it's just like a thumbnail or like a mock-up, if that one thing is not quite right and you don't want to start over again because you don't have the references or the resources or whatever, you just can't roll with it. Is it just me? Am I the only one that's like obsessively stuck on every single aspect of my artwork? Like I can't, 
I have this trouble with painting too. I'd really love to be like this very like loose and like willy-nilly, um, not willy-nilly, that sounds like degrading, but I'd love to be this really like loose and uh, expressive watercolor painter and I just can't give up that tight control. Like I'm just too, which is also weird because I, I think that's why I love cores so much actually because I literally cannot control them 100%. Um, so they like force that looseness and that expression on me by virtue of what they are, how dispersive they are. So, I don't know. I wasn't expecting to do some introspective psychology on my art making. I'm sure we could really dive in even more if we wanted to and figure out why I'm such a control freak about my work. Um, although I suspect that all artists are control freaks about their work, even the really loose and flowy expressive ones. Even Jackson Pollock, as much as I dislike him, he splattered paint in uh, a particular a particular way. It is not just the randomly throw paint at the canvas that uh, modern art haters like to think it is. It's still bullshit. Don't get me wrong. Jackson Pollock was still bullshit, but his even his paint splatter technique there was a, a degree of control and obsessiveness in that that I think all artists have. So yeah, I'll let you veg the music for a few more minutes and I will catch you at the end.
Yeah, like I rambled on earlier um, and mentioned, this is a piece that I definitely want to revisit. Um, I'm definitely going to be heading to downtown Syracuse to take some reference pictures because Clinton Square is not horribly substantially changed other than, you know, the canal is filled in. But a lot of those, like, those buildings are still there. Um, that intersection is still a place that I can at least get a better perspective on it and then sort of go off from there. Maybe even hit up the Onondaga Historical Association's archives um, if they're available online and see, or uh, one of the Syracuse History Facebook groups and see if I can find some... Um, pictures and uh, the perspective that I want so that I can place things and my figures aren't like weirdly gigantic in the foreground like obnoxiously gigantic in the foreground um, so if you like this then YouTube will be suggesting something else that you might like uh, I'm not going to tell you to like or comment or subscribe or any of that because I don't tell you how to live your life uh, wear your mask like these good little plague folk down by the not lock that's the bridge not the lock we'll pretend it's the lock for purposes of relating to the prompt and black lives matter i will see you tomorrow bye